with the electrical contact. We build our own points. And sometimes our own frogs, those are precast frogs right there. But this is how we build all the track and the layout. It's all hand laid. It doesn't take too long. You think it'd be hard at first, but it's not really that hard. So now we're coming from one of the uh, newer scenes in the layout in terms of building to the oldest scene in the layout. This was the first scene to be completed. Uh, this is Regen's Vermont, uh, formerly known as Inverness when they had fictional names. But we decided that since it is really Regen's Vermont, why, why not name it Regen's Vermont? So, as you can see, we're kind of bouncing back and forth between the New York and the Vermont border. But uh, that's just the way our railroad runs to, to create some really nice scenes. So here in Virginia, the, uh, the Edison branch splits off, and as you can see, it actually goes nowhere. The, we do have a very large layout here, but it's very hard to kind of fit every single part of the scene in. So our next stop's going to be Willsboro Bay and Lake and uh, Red Rocks. So here we are over Willsboro Bay. This is uh, and actually a pretty much scale-sized scene. They went out when it was uh, icy out in the bay and walked out, took pictures and measurements. So if you went up here on uh, Amtrak's Adirondack, you'd actually run through this, see this scene where they, the, uh, the uh, Canyon Pacific still runs today. And uh, we really went to great lengths to try to get this pretty accurate. Now we're in the we were in the middle room right here where Willsboro Bay is. Now we're gonna head into the third room or the main room where most of the layout action actually is. All right, so here we are coming in uh, into Lake George. We have uh, what is a, uh, a New England Berkshire and Western RS3 on a local here uh, on the siding, waiting for us to come by in the main line. Since it's a local, it has a lower priority, and our paper train has to move through with uh, stuff bound eventually to New York City. So we got to keep on the move, and the locals are sitting there waiting for us. So here we have the local. We've got uh, Chuck Nygaard, we met earlier, running the local northbound. And uh, now that the, the regular train has passed, we are clear to proceed north of the local. The switch has been thrown. And he's on his way. So here you're looking at uh, the Million Dollar Beach. Uh, they call it the Million Dollar Beach because they trucked in a million dollars worth of sand. That's 1940s million dollars worth of sand uh, for the uh, executive type people, the rich people, to come up here because there's actually no sand on the lake. So they trucked in the sand to have a resort community. And the track you see coming off the main line there in the foreground uh, is what they knew called the marine track. And that's how they actually used to launch a boat. It was a 1950s boat ramp. So nowadays, you back to trucking with the trailer under the water. They used to do it with the boss car and some flat cars in order to launch their boats back in the 1950s and 40s because the trucks really weren't powerful enough to pull the big boats. So here we are at the causeway. Uh, this actually existed on the Rutland on the north end of uh, Lake Champlain. Uh, we modeled on the south end of our fictitious Lake Richelieu. And uh, it's actually just a whole bunch of marble in about six feet of water. The, the, the end of the lake was really, really shallow. And this represents the longest causeway, which is about three miles long. And the spring bridge, which the train is now just about at, uh, was a hand crank spring bridge. And the guys used to actually have to crank that by hand when people wanted to come by with the boats. So here we are now in uh, across the causeway. We're in the middle of the lake. We're in South Euro, uh, which is just a small representative town of, this, of, the, of uh, a small island town. Across another small causeway here, and we come into Grand Isle, another island in the middle of the lake. And 
One thing you notice back here is we've got a big orange creamery. Milk was a very important part of the commodity for both railroads, the Rutland and the Delaware and Hudson. And so we had to model it so we have a lot of traffic coming from the milk plants. Uh, there's a daily milk train. Before refrigeration, they had to run a milk fast, so it's the highest priority train on the layout when the milk train comes through. Everybody else has to get out of the way. So here we are, typical summer cabins up along the, you know, the north area. People come up in the Adirondacks to, uh, to just kind of hang out in summer, picnicking, boating, fishing, pick your pick. So here we are coming into North Bennington Yard. It's a little bit bigger than it actually is in real life because we needed to model it. That's the point. It's the middle of our layout uh, between the north and the south. To the north, what we were just on was the Richelieu Division. We're going to proceed under the Berkshire Division now, heading into Troy. This is a scene off the B&M and the Rutland Railroads uh, in North Bennington. They still interchange there a little bit. Well, the Rutland doesn't exist anymore, but that's where they still have the interchange. So we had no work in Bennington to do. The paper train continues highballing straight through. We come into Proctor, Vermont, where the Vermont Marble Company is. It's where all the marble got, came from for the causeways. And all the scrap marble that they had here, from here, was sent uh, to the causeway to help build that base for the, for the railroad. Now, the Vermont Marble Company had plants far away in Tacoma, Washington and whatnot. They were one of the biggest marble producers of the day. Again, you can see this is one of our scenes that's under construction. Part of the land we've been in now is on the Rutland Railroad between Rutland, Vermont and Bellows Falls. Um, it's a line we just passed into the township of Chester, which actually hasn't changed a whole lot in 50 years. We were just up there in the spring, I mean in the fall, in September, and it's still pretty similar to how we have it modeled. As we come up the grade here, Summit, we're approaching the highest point on the layout. Uh, and as you can see, it's pretty high. It's about 51 inches off the ground. We tried to model the layout to our height when we built it initially 30 years, figuring it would just be us working on it. It's easier to work on at the level of, say, chest height or so, and you can get up on a stool to work behind, rather than having to bend over all the time. Right here, we're passing the talcum powder mill with gases from one. And this was the... Uh, at one point in time, supplied all the baby powder for Johnson & Johnson, all the top they got from there. So one of the highlights of the layout is the Bartonsville Covered Bridge. It used to be a highlight for rail fans, a highlight for scenic enthusiasts. And this is where we get our date of September 25, 1950, for the actual date of the layout model. All of our equipment is from 1950 to 53. As you see that postcard right there, and then this is our model representation of it. We have all the gorgeous wall foliage in the background and the covered bridge there. And it just creates an enormous scene. So now we're proceeding south past Bartonsville. Uh, this is what's going to be the Cuttingsville Trestle. Or east, it's in uh, East Wallingford, Vermont, actually. This is a, a staple scene of the layout that hasn't been finished yet. It's uh, the Jim Shaughnessy photo of uh, a couple of Rutland RS3s and the Rutland boxcars up from underneath it. It's what we're trying to recreate here. And he made a really nice photo of that, and that's a staple scene of this part of the railroad. We continue south past East Clarence, near Vermont. This is all filled in yet. It used to be overgrazed by cattle. We enter uh, Johnsonville, New York, which is a scene stolen from the Boston and Maine Railroad. Um, we proceed south here, and we've entered double track territory. And we're getting real close to what we call up here in this part of New York, the Capital District. Uh, Saratoga is right around the corner here. Off into the background goes the Glens Falls branch. Molding sand was a big industry, actually, up in Saratoga, and they shipped it in Bosch cars and the molders build their sand because it was so great for, uh, for building with the concrete and whatnot. It was actually a huge commodity up there. Uh, it's no longer anymore, but uh, that's what we're trying to model here. Just coming into Saratoga Springs now, past the playhouse, on the corner of the station. And uh, we don't have passengers for the racetrack, but uh, you guys can train a little later on, Will. So here we are at the Saratoga Spring Station. Again, this is modeled right after the real thing. Pictures, uh, blueprints were coming through on the main track. Unfortunately now, this station and most of the buildings in the background are gone. The track has been realigned to the west side of the city in Saratoga and no longer runs through downtown. People weren't really aware of the historical value of some of this stuff at the time. Now everybody's trying to save everything, but back then they didn't. 
So now we enter another stolen scene. This is on the Boston and Albany now CSX main line. This is the state line tunnel. It's in Canaan, uh, New York, Canaan, Mass, in real life. But uh, we modeled it on the uh, Vermont, New York border. It's kind of a filler. And back there is Reynolds, New York, which is another stolen B&M scene. Now we're getting really close to Troy, which is our staple point of the way. It's the main part of our, of our scene. Coming into uh, Cohoes up here, across the river from Troy, and a little bit to the north. This is a major area of industry at the time. Uh, as you can see, this is one of the parts of the that hasn't really been worked on at all. We just have some mock-up buildings and whatnot. The trains still run through, the tracks still run through. And we're going to proceed south in the Green Island. And here we have the interchange between New York, New York Central and Delaware and Hudson. And the B&M had some interchange all through here. And that would be represented in the backdrop. We used to have some hidden staging track back there for that, but we don't do that anymore. It turned out to be too much of a hassle. So here we are at the Green Island Troy Bridge. Uh, this bridge used to uh, be strictly a railroad bridge. Uh, it collapsed in 77 and it has since been rebuilt. It's a lift bridge. We actually had it lift at one point in the layout, but due to electrical problems with the track and the engine's not really running over it, we had to kind of solder it down and whatnot. So we're now on the north leg of the Y in Troy, heading into the yard, coming through uh, Fifth Avenue now. Up to 6th Avenue, where the tracks used to run right down the street. And here we cross the magical line between Troy and Rutland, Vermont, a whole two hours away. So here we are now, we're entering Rutland Yard, a quick uh, two hour jump and a little bit of geographical repositioning. Um, the actual yard here that used to be in North Troy wasn't quite big enough to suit our needs, so we decided to model the Rutland Yard. And it's almost to scale as it is seen right here. So I want to show you a real quick prototype photo that we have to get a real good sense of the Yard here. Uh, this picture was taken from a bridge over the entrance to the yard, which we've seen already. And if you take a look at this and then come out, you see the same photo. Uh, in essence, you know, we don't have the cars in the right position, but that was taken from a bridge. It's right here. We model it on the layout. And it, the positioning of that photograph and compared to the layout kind of makes it really interesting. People can come in and look at that look at the yard and see how accurate we try to make things. All right, so uh, we've come into Troy now, into Rutland Yard, and our train's now done for the day. Uh, we were running uh, AT2, so AT2 just finishes in Troy. Now, if we would have been a passenger train, we would have gone the other way in the Y, on the south leg of the Y. And we're going to come down and take a look into downtown Troy now, where the passenger station is. So here we are now in Troy. This is the Troy Union Station, was jointly owned by the Boston and Maine, the New York Central, and the Delaware and Hudson. At one point in time in the early uh, 30s, there were 160 trains in and out of here every day between commuter trains down to Albany and back. And if we had come off the bridge and gone on the uh, south leg of the Y, we would have come into the station here, which is where all the passenger traffic went. Since this is the end of the line for our railroad, we have to go into Rutland Yard with a freight train. So here we are now in South Troy. This is the southern end of the layout. Uh, behind us is the staging yard again. So this is uh, where it used to be a big blast furnace, and King's Fuels used to be here, too. And as you can see, you get the big King's Fuels fuel tank. I've got a turn slightly for you so you can see the winking eye right now. But uh, you can see that from 787 if you're coming up to visit us from Point South. All right, this scene is, uh, again, not quite finished, but uh, as you can see, it's about eight feet long. And uh, in reality, uh, that's quite small. It's been compressed quite a bit. The building here in the foreground uh, was a horseshoe uh, warehouse. And if we did that to scale, it would actually be eight feet long. That's how big these facilities really, really were. And what we've used is use some N-scale equipment in the background to try to force some compression here to, to, to give it perspective to the eye. So now we hit the southern terminus of the layout, and we're going to go into the staging yard. So why don't you follow me in here to see that. So here we've entered the southern staging yard, and this is the second of two, as we saw the northern one earlier. This represents Albany and Rensselaer and the southern points of the layout. Uh, we have a very extensive website dedicated to not only the club, but the prototype modeling at uh, www dot union dot rpi dot edu slash railroad and uh, you can see all kinds of information there thanks for having us on the train show uh, for this edition it was great to have you guys up you guys do a great job we'll see you around